For many years, the area has struggled with high unemployment, antisocial behaviour and crime. The only life in Valley Vegas is going around robbing cars, robbing houses. Yet despite these challenges, most are proud to call Valley Beg home. What do you think we have? Lelia's house is always lively. Do you want to pay your bill now? No. <laughs> Over 12 months, the drama of everyday life unfolds. <laughs> this is a big year. This is a big! I think this is the most important time now in my life. <laughs> Stories of hope and despair. Triumph and disappointment. I want people to see that the people living in this area are as good as everybody else. Welcome to the estate. Come back with you! Come back with you! Come back with you! Come back with you! You know, like, you know, 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 you we hang around here the whole time, literally every single day. Like, we never leave Bally Bagel, let's go to town. Well, I'm the youngest out of the group, like, we hang around with about 14 lads and about 6 girls. It's like back at him, fuck back at him. <laughs> there are some people growing up Bally Bag that, I don't know, came out the wrong side. Yeah. That you come out on the wrong side. But like, we came out on the good side. But I think that's because we had club though. Yeah. I'd say if we didn't have club, we'd be on the wrong side too. With the Homer Club, it was Monday to Thursday. That's where me and Cathy met each other. That's actually where we met most of our friends. Yeah, most that of our friends. we still hang around with that to this day. Yeah, to this day we met them in club. That's crooked. It's not crooked. It so I'm telling you, that's crooked. I don't know how many times I have to say anything. Well, if I have ten other children, yeah. then I'll have to get their names tattooed on me too, won't I? Is that one for you? Uh, no, not really. Is it ours? Yeah, there's just a little patch of it there and there. Gone. And, yeah. Gone? Yeah, there's not there. Ballybeg is Waterford's largest estate with over 4,000 residents. Vincent has been here from the beginning. I'm 41 now, so I'm in Ballybeg over 30 years. And in that 30 year, I see Bally Big grow. I see the church being built, the shop being built, the schools being built, and more park being built. We were the first generation of children on this estate. Now, this is the heart of Bally Big now. You're coming into the heart of it. Great place, beautiful place. Even the dogs know me. <laughs> this is where I spent the best days of my life. And I see these people now today that have their own children. I remember only kids themselves. And I said, I only remember you, kid. That's my kid now. And that's why he feels proud of, you know. It's a massive estate. The first school was the Holy Ghost. And when my mother started the school, uh, there were 16 children in the class, and uh, eight or nine of them was hers. But in the space of 35 years, look, have a look around you. We have Tesco's, we have Tesco's garage, we have the shopping centre, we had the pub. But unfortunately, that got damaged. But um, that was even a great place for people to meet. The bands that used to come there, the entertainment, I actually used to sing in that pub. I used to do Elvis and Bob Marley. I'm known as a singer. Yeah, that's there since 1980, that church. It's a beautiful church. And the people, the funerals and weddings and Christian comes on. People from all over Bally Bay comes in and joins in the big happy party. You know, it's a great place. Bless your face, Paddy. Bless your face. And I get a pain in my hand sometimes. I nickname myself the Pope on there because everyone keeps beeps and waves and shakes my hand. And I think that's a great thing. It takes a lifetime to get a good name. And it takes a lifetime to build up a community. But it takes a second to destroy it if you know where I'm coming from. There used to be a 52 snooker tables, 15 pool tables, and in there there was about 30, 40 games and pool tables. And all the youngsters loved that. 
I loved it. But it's all gone now. It's all gone. Over the years, Ballybeg has seen good times and bad. The Ballybeg was a rough spot, like, back in the days, like. Not much activities to do when we were smaller, like, around there, like, you know what I mean? Some of my friends in school wouldn't come, like, in secondary school, wouldn't come out here to hang around with me because it was Ballybeg. They were afraid in case they walked up the street and got stabbed. Like, it's not like that. Like, it hasn't been like that for years. Now. I'm not, still not comfortable. <laughs> it's just like a porn star there. <laughs> so close your legs in case you have a rip between your legs. I don't have a rip between your legs. I had some of my best memories here. I had some of my best days here. It wasn't like the shithole everybody thinks it is. It wasn't all about burning out cars and robbing houses. Yeah, we used to love to watch it burn down cars all right. the way. It's the guards just... It's freezing. In the, in the middle of winter, oh, you just see smoke. Over to the lovely fire. Over to the fire, lads, and we get a heat. Twenty-five-year-old Dennis has recently returned to the estate after being released from prison. Well, when I used to rob houses, it was like Christmas, like, and I was off fourteen years of age. Every night, right, I'd go off on a bike and I'd actually just rob a house, and it'd feel like Christmas when you're in there because you just don't know what you're going to find, like, you know. I've been kind of hanging around, well, looking up at all the older boys that were getting into trouble and getting chases off guards and that, and I thought it was pretty cool at the time as well, like, you know, and then that's how I kind of slipped into the criminal world. At 13, it was just hash. After I tried smoke, then I kind of got older, kind of got a bit braver, and I said to myself, sure, I may as well start taking ease and speed, and then that's when I got all out of control. Then. It kind of led to have to pay him for the smoke then, so then I had to end up robbing houses and snatch purses. And... But I think there was, there was one now I was, uh, I would have been about 15. I robbed a house in Lismore, and um, I am not missing much, you know. Talking about bags of jewellery, like, and I was just walking out the front door, and the man that owned the house, like, he was this size. He caught me up by the neck and straight down onto the floor. I walk up inside the guards' barracks. Uh, not knowing what I did. No gold in my pockets. I just didn't give a... Just didn't give a fuck. Basically, um... Well, to be honest with you, I don't know... When you're a little fella, you don't really care about much things at all. Like, like, and you do all these small things, which now, if I'd done them, now, like, you'd say, yeah, that's a serious thing to do, like, which it is, like, but you're a child, you don't know any better, like, you know? For many young people on the estate, the Ballybeg Youth Project keeps them occupied and out of trouble. There's 60 cups on a shelf. One broke, how many left? 59. No. Wrong. Five. What? Six tea cups. Six. Six tea, tea cups. cups. <laughs> you know what, six tea cups. I think it's very tough for people like that are 19 coming out of school now. Because there's nothing here. Like, just, like there's not really much work out there, is there? Lads. 19-year-old Tommy is a volunteer at the youth club. Today, they're heading off on a camping trip. You want me to just leave it there for a second? Before I found the youth club, I was just hanging around the streets. Yeah, so once I found the youth club, then I just kind of found my feet, you know. Uh, just came down here every day, and now I stopped coming down, even if I want the club on, like I used to come down. Still doing it now to this day, like. You know, if you're holding in stuff, and you really want to get it out, like, and you just can't talk to your friends or your family and stuff like that, you can just come down here, or, you go to Bernardo's or somewhere like that, you know, that someone actually listen to you. I had an awful, like, I had loads of problems, like, and it just relieved you, like, you know, you just come out happier, like, you just come out smiling at the end of it. Fair play to you, Omi. Right, come on, we go up and head with the tents. You just put these through here, look. This is my first time ever setting up okay. Is it? Yep. Right, so you just kind of watch and learn and you'll know how to do it then the next time. If you could have asked me there four years ago as I don't be working with young kids, I would have laughed at you like I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known I was gonna be doing this like. And you just hold that there for me, Dammy. Just hold that in there like that. Doing something positive for myself and for them. That that could have been the turning point of my life, like, you know. And hopefully it's long may it continue now because I'm actually having the best time of my life with it. Woo! You built it, yeah. Perfect.
perfect. If you don't go to college or if you don't do anything, then there's just nothing there. Like, apply for community development, which like I have a big interest in doing because I want to kind of become um, a youth worker when I'm older. It's kind of harder these days because people losing their jobs and stuff. It's harder to get a place, even to get an interview would be like impossible. So I'm just hoping you now, like as a late applicant, I might actually get an interview. I'd be massive disappointment if I didn't get in. Massive. Having missed the deadline, it will be several weeks before Tommy knows if he's been called for interview. Twenty-year-old Shauna moved out of home two years ago. It's Munster final day and a rare occasion for Shauna to have a night out with her friends. Me and Katty are buzzing and when we get drunk we'll be even more buzzing. I'm around the table, shall I'm lucky because I have this house. This is a council house. I live here, right? Now we used to sit on the wall just literally straight across the way. And we used to sit there till like 10, 11 o'clock at night, like just. Smoking fags, smoking fags, and. and yeah, piles on your arse. Yeah, piles, piles on your arse. My mother turned around me one day if I kept sitting on cold walls, I was going to come out with the best piles. <laughs> and we just used to sit there for hours. And I used to look over at this house boarded up, and I'd be like, it's a shame to see a house boarded up in Ballybeck. Who oh, knew that, like, four years later I'd be living here? Mm. <laughs> People coming in and out doesn't bother me at all. But like I like in the evening times when it's around nine o'clock, I like to just sit down in front of the television, just unwind, just nobody else, well, except for Cathy who'll come down for a cup of tea and just annoy the head off me. <laughs> Michael, fuck off! <laughs> I don't care! You're buying a new one! It's not funny! Ow! It's drunk! Ow! Michael, fuck off! Where's the phone? Where's the hairspray? Billy? Um. Where's the phone? When I was in school and I wanted to do hairdressing, I'd love to be doing the course. I'd do the full time course, but I dream big. I'd open up my own little salon, do everything, but. Like last year I couldn't afford it because I wasn't working and I was on crap money and if my mother sees this it'd be like you didn't save like I told you to save. I finished school and the first week in December I found out I was pregnant. I was 17. I was terrified. Back then it was just like nah I can't talk to my mother about that. Oh my god she, she'll kill me. I'll, oh she'll be mortified. Like the one thing my mother wanted in this in her whole entire life was for me not to get pregnant when I was 17 because that was what she was, that was her life. Say, Mammy, give us the money for this walk where she said I would never for myself. But we were able to play the Timmy's and we used to go outside a place called Dale and Name, which is do McDonald's, where McDonald's is in Marford now. And then days you make 20, 30 quid. And not for smokers. <laughs> it's a fucking fags had me fuck, man. Yeah, little Tim Missle, the banjo, the bar on. I love those shots in the bar on, though. And here's the No, man. We were out every youthful in Ballybeck, and new ones, you know what I mean, well got, go up to the Ronans, go up to Mrs Ronan, if you have a problem go see Vincent, he'll talk to you, he'll tell you what to do. A very, very well got family in Ballybeck, one of the biggest and one of the proudest family, as my mother reared 11 of us on her own in a house in the state, that's tough. I take day for day, you know what I mean, my own head don't be right the best of times. God gave me some gift, I don't know what he gave me, but I'm, uh, I often said to myself, what did God put me in this order for? Does no one have a bad word to say about me? If they are, they're only few. You know what I'm saying? You go to uh, anywhere, 
And that's kind of when you say to anyone, lads, you know Vincent Lowe, they laugh, say, oh man, Vincent, they say. But I'm well liked, I make people laugh. See this altar here now. Everything you see there was given to me. This came out of the skip about 15 feet there and didn't break. When I used to, when I was young for that, I was wild, my mother knew I'd be easily led. She knew I was capable of doing that, but I'd done nothing. You know what I'm saying? She, but she knew the people out there know I'd be afraid or shy to say no. I couldn't say no to that. And uh, she used to hold that in her hand and pray for me. And when I come back then, she said, oh, thank God, say Martin, say Martin, say Martin. Yeah. And the uh, priest, he's dead now, Father Pat Byrne gave me that. He said to me one day, I was sitting outside, waiting for a chip, and he came over and he gave me that. And he said, I always believe, he said, you're a very holy young friend. He said, I'm, I'm a vibe, I get a vibe off you, he said. Even Father Martin, he said to me one day, I was I'm now thing in my head, and he said, pray for me. And he's never helped you since, you know. Now I'm no angel, don't get me wrong, I'm no angel. I've done things, God forgive me for doing. But uh, you learn by your mistakes, you know, you learn by your mistakes. Although only 25 years old, Dennis has already spent eight years in the custody of the state. Yeah, when I was 13, I burnt uh, down a hypermarket. Cost, what well, was a half million pounds worth of damage. My first sentence was 10 months in Pats. Well, like, that, that, that's going to be just the start of the 10 months, OK? And like I would say, four months into the 10 months, and then I went back down to the circle court and they gave me eight year and uh, five suspended. So, yeah, it's kind of pretty rough, especially at that age, like 16, going down to the circle court and the judge turned around saying, eight year and five suspended, and you're looking there like that. And like no family around you or nothing there, just uh yeah. Oh, I definitely cried that night in the cell all right, yeah. Put the pillow over my head up with the telly, oh I don't know. At that age going in there and trying to get used to the surroundings of it, like you know what I mean? And the people that were in it then as well were stone mad in the world, like and like like every day there was someone getting stabbed in there, like and you were looking at it and I saying to myself, How am I gonna get through this without getting a slice on the face like which is true. Life in jail is definitely your life gone. It's been four months since Dennis was released from prison. This time, he's determined not to go back. Like, I've tried to stay away from Robin, which I have. I actually stayed away from Robin since I'm actually out this time. Like, the minute you get up in the morning, like, you'd want to go for an old job. I'd want to, you'd want to do some activities so you won't be just waking up straight away and go calling down to your friend and having a smoke. Especially when they're saying, ah, you're a bad man, come on, we do it. It's only for one night, but you just stay up two or three nights with the speed in it, like, you know, so, yeah, saying no is kind of the hardest, but I've kind of learned how to say no in a nice and manly way and say, no, lads, I'm sorry, I actually don't want to do this. I actually have a gym in the morning, so. I do believe I'm after going up now, and jail just ain't the place to be when you have two kids. It's hard saying goodbye to RHI in jail when you're looking at your two kids and they're walking and they're saying bye, and, you know, Hard, like this hard. I actually want to be a better dad. I don't want my own son going down the same way I went. Like, I definitely don't want them going down the same way I went. At Shona's house, Mum Sharon has popped by to say hello. He said I was an testament to health. Oh, God, health right? Do not lie to me. No, what's your shirt? What's your blood sugar? My sugars are fine. Now look me in the face and tell me the truth, Mammy. My sugars You're lying. are fine. I'm not lying. I got diagnosed with diabetes in 2006 and I was initially put on the tablets, the glucose, the Micron and all of those and I couldn't control the sugar. And I'm now on three different types of insulin. I took my sugars at half past 12 today and the read I got was 16.0. A normal blood sugar should read between four and five. Okay, so that's high, and a lot of people would say quite high, but for me, it's down a bit because my last read before that was 23.9. I just prick the finger like so, and blood has come through a little dog like that, and it takes a read, it's 14.2. So it has come down almost two points. When the glucometer says high, Right, I'm at risk of a stroke or a heart attack there and then. And all the literature will tell you if your glucometer reads high, you should be seeking medical advice immediately. 
which I don't, I go for a walk because I'm still a person and so I'm not, not anybody's problem just yet. Let me walk it off because it's like a car having too much petrol in it. What are you going to do? You're going to have to burn it off. So I go for a walk, but it doesn't always work. Me and my mother will have our arguments and our arguments will start when her sugars are high. And when her sugars are high, she is in a fail mood. She's going to kill me for saying this, but she's in a fail mood. She, I mean, the world, the God, Jesus Christ, if he came down to her, she'd probably take the head off. That's how bad her moods are when her sugars are high. She gets moody and temperamental and hormonal. You'd swear she's going to pop a baby out there any second. But we do, we kill each other. I think all of us know to provide my mother when her sugars are high. I don't want my kids and my husband or anybody else worrying about me. You know, like, I worry about them. That's my job. Their job is not to worry. So I'm not going to always tell them how bad things actually are. Because, you know, they have their own families. They have enough to worry about. They don't need to be worrying about the mother. That's my job. It's been four weeks. And Tommy hasn't heard anything about his college application. Two years since I first went on the door and it's just been the, kind of the worst thing ever. Being on a hundred tour and having to rely on a win in the bookies to keep me going throughout the rest of the week. It's like kind of a failure even to be on the door, like, you know. It's, that's why I'm hopefully, like, you know, getting back into college and stuff. 15 euros my max on a Tuesday. Three, four euro bets on a Tuesday. That's all I can afford at this stage. Sometimes I win 60, sometimes I win 50. Sometimes I lose it all. If I don't get it this year, I'll like, gradually just move away from this place. I'd hate doing it, but like, I'll give myself to December just to, you know, get away from it all and just regroup and think again about what I want to do for the future. Okay, so I'm after losing that bet, I mean, I have 90 euro left and I have to give my father 40, so I have 50 for myself left. If I one more bet, then I'll leave. I love the volunteering down here so far. When it comes to the stage where you're just saying like, I'd rather get paid for this sort of stuff, you know? So you know, I'm about to do my volunteering, but I'm to, like, you know, basically doing everything for free. Oh, I got a load of credit for it, like, you know, like, get, get a load of praise and stuff, like. But, yeah, it's just a time where you just kind of have to move on, try something new. Summer in Bally Bay, and an event of national importance is about to unfold. Now that's Katie Taylor now. This is on the front page of the Irish Day. She's going to do it. She's going to win it tonight. I have faith. I know she's going to win it. She fights like a man. She's the hunger. She had this sting. It's like the Irish, they won't give in. You have to kill them before they give in. She should stick her foot into the cameras by another ballot. I wouldn't be giving her a cheek. She was my girlfriend today, I'm going out and said, Hi. I wouldn't be giving her a cheek. But I like watching the Olympics. I'm watching the Olympics all my life now. Even as a little fella, I used to hop myself off the balance and get three or four stitches and go up the road and jump off walls. You know what I mean? And they're always trying to get me into the ring, but no, no. I, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I fight for what I love. No, not me. No. But I cook a camera, very hyperactive. I had ADBH, whatever you call it, very hyperactive. But don't harm me, like. I never even passed the test, to be honest. I never done A levels or, or anything like that. Nah. You can learn yourself how to read and write. I like to write with both hands. I like not to do I used to look. I'd be there, I was embarrassed to people be saying, Can you make up what that is? Nah. But no, women does a woman feel how sexy is on God. <laughs> See, I have to be that woman. I have to be. You're watching Katie Taylor tonight. The boxing, she's boxing, she's boxing for gold. You want from Bray? Yeah. If you don't, the boxing club. Yeah. 
And we've got an RT1, an RT2, a BBC1, a BBC3, a BBC4. She's going to win it. Who are we going to watch fight, Johnny? Katie who? No, Johnny, I'm waiting for you all day, keep up. If you're doing that, will you come down and watch Katie Taylor box on the boxing club? Will you come down and watch it? Why is she doing sitting in playing with the laptops? The computer's driving your brain mad. Come on. You come coming, Bossy! Stay there! Stay in the gutter! Of course, I'm not now! now. You should, you should be, be able to run. Keep running. Keep, keep yourself fit. fit. Goodbye. Where, Where are we going, Johnny? I don't want to go now. Because you went down the road. Man, the man is coming down. Man, goodbye now. Why would you be down sitting in the house? Look, why would you be down sitting in the house, Johnny? Watching telly. Watching PlayStation. Come on. Surely Tate Taylor is a fucking runner. Now the box is a splinter. Splinter. So apparently she's a boxer, so we're going to watch her box. Oh, you fucking twat in the house! Cat, that's that screaming. Jesus Christ, we fucking forced. I heard you two girls up from the boxing club, and that's where everyone's going to watch Katie Taylor play the match. Play the match, play the match, Sean. Fucking box. I don't know, Catty. And you just know I know all these things when I have a family full of boxes. Tommy is still waiting to hear about his college application. It's the second time Tommy has applied for the course. The last time, he had to drop out because of a lack of financial support. Two years ago, was, it was the money that's the biggest 
fatter and this year it's all about the money again. If I get the letter and it says that I am an interview and if the funding's not there then there's actually no point of even going for the interview. Your list. My list. Your list, right. You have to do... Your mind is card application. It's there. It's there. Right. Filled in. It's, it's actually the one that works down here is Jen Hanlon is getting me to do all the stuff because I will totally not pull my weight until someone gives me a list to do stuff. I'm not very good at multitasking. I'm going to bring college for further education and I'm going to see if they have any news on dates for interviews. Hi, how are you? My name is Jenny Hannon. I'm calling by Bay Community Youth Project. Um, I'm just calling in relation to a young person who is applying for college. What is the fee for the course? Do you know what planet? And is that all paid in one long summer? Is there any facilities? There's no facilities at all for any of the social welfare recipients. Oh, goodness. Okay. Alright, listen, thank you so much for your help. Thanks, man, and bye-bye. Because you were doing that, you have a medical card? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, but of course, 470 euros, you have to pay it all. Good luck. No, really. And then, see ya. There's another cost. So the cost. 340 for your course, for the course costs. Like this, 470 your registration fee, and then the course costs is 340 Is it not only the one we were expecting? Yeah. I was expecting like, what was I expecting? 400 and like max. Age 30, between everything. Double. And there is no facility for car payments or... Jesus. Because, because I have to steal. Long, you are not going down the front garden. The hardest thing I've ever had to steal in my whole life, life is being a single mother. mother. It's either gas, long, our clothes this week, or put food on the table, or pay the electricity bill this week, or have food on the table. I have to pay the full bill. I'm not the full bill. I don't have a home on the I have 50 cents in my purse. I have, I have to be in a hell of a lot more worse than I want to be in to get fucking me to put in. Excuse my language. I'm going to leave myself going to tell you about your ears. I'm going to do it. I won't wish to say that any girl. I hope you'll say wait. Okay. Okay. Before we just follow up. <laughs> yeah, it's like one night set up. My gosh. The meter is easy because basically I buy, say, 30 euros electricity a week, put the cards into the meter, and then if it cuts out, I have to buy more electricity. I know I have to buy it and buy it. So if I don't have it, I don't have it. And I can budget myself so that I'm not getting bills as well for 500 euros like I am getting. So, so it's, it's just an easier, easier method of payment, payment but they don't, they don't do it unless you're in serious, 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 which, which I don't, don't understand. It's just stupid. I, I, I think, think it's, it's Wednesday, Wednesday, which is my waiting day. day. I call it my waiting day. day. And I, I have 50 cents in my purse. purse. I, have, I, I can get no action. I think I have 46 cents in my purse, if I'm being honest. I have nothing. Although Shauna moved into her own house a year ago, she still needs the support of her mother, Sharon. Luckily, she only lives a few doors away. The gas, it's, it's only the car, so, so I can I just top off the car when I need when I have money to do. It's, it's paying, paying off the electricity, paying off the beans, paying off the, beans, paying off the, off the sky. sky. 
That's the only that I've had. That's the only And then just working away. We went to It already comes out of it. So it comes out of the automatic. So if I come down with you, I put my money in and chop them. We run on the table and say, right, put this on this, this on that. Because I go do my food chopping and I end up spending 100 euros and. It's food down by the end of the year. Yeah, because you're not eating my practical food. You're eating this. You're not eating yours. I know, yeah. Yeah, so you're spending a hundred. So do you know what that tells me? You're spending a hundred euros on rubbish. So I'm dead, man. I spent a hundred euros because I don't have to come to the house and eat this food. Yeah, but just how many times have I told you the only person can stop that is okay? I won't stop that. No. Your friends are welcome to come and visit you. Just nobody's saying that they're not welcome to come and visit you. You have too many people walking in to your house like it's their house and opening the presses. And that's why it's so bad. That's why it's as bad as it is. And that means if you have to get up and go to the sitting room, leave the sitting room, walk the whole way into that big kitchen that you have and make the tea yourself. And stop sending other people in to make it. Because that's people are too much in your house. Take back the control. I said, I said that you, I said that you only two weeks ago. The only person with power is you. And the only power other people have is the power that you give to them. Like, I rarely to be independent. I rarely to stand on your own two feet. That's the type of person I want you to be. That's the type of person I want your brothers to be. I want to know that the four children that I had are responsible. They're in control of their own destinies and they're in control of their own life. And then, when you have all of that control, you see that nasty little habit you have there? That nasty little habit can be controlled too. Yeah, don't talk about it, just do it. Not, Not long, long out, out of prison, prison. Dennis, Dennis is finding, finding life difficult. difficult. I was, was kind of a bit shocked shock when we went to live and I came down because I went down, down a week, week like, and he was, he was only after, after being in jail, jail and he was only after, after being out a week and he was just, he was like, he had a heart attack and he died. Well, apparently, three times a week, just, just say hello and goodbye and goodbye. Let them know that there's people, people, people still thinking of them, like, you know? know? Listen, come, come over here, like, and have a bit of comfort, then, like, like, they're keeping uh, away from bits and parts of it as well, like, you know? Like, I broke up with the girlfriend then as well, like, you know what I mean? And then, then like, like, having two kids, kids at home and as well, like, and then coming down, and then all this kind of happening, and then, like, you'd like to have your own woman there to give you a bit of company, but, nah, she never showed up. But, but which, which like, like she's mine and two children as well, so how could you like? like and she's she from her, so. so. Yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know, some days you would like, would, like, like feel like killing like yourself, you know that? Some days you would actually feel, feel like doing like, 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 Yeah, yeah, you, you would. would. I, don't I don't know. know. I, th I, think I think it's just belly day. I think, I think there's, there's a curse on belly day. To be honest, there's a curse in the world. world. After, after the after, after the funeral, funeral that night, my head was just, just and there's a field that passed there, a dog over the road. Like even like I I did it two or three times, like but I just I couldn't do it because I was thinking of my children and I was thinking of people at my funeral and that which would make you cry. I don't, I don't know, know. Maybe, maybe I think, I think at the right things, things at the right time, time before, before it happens. Like, like if, if I do, if I do turn, turn for the worst, like, like I, I, I always ask my granddad and Uncle Thomas for help. The grandma was with you. That's not word we're like.
for a lot of the next couple weeks. weeks. I'm just trying, trying to, stay to stay away from, from the small. And, and I'm, I'm trying, trying to stay away from one or two people that are um, kind of not just hash, but like on speed and cork. So I can stay away from them. And then if I kind of stay away from them, well, I stay away from having the choice to take the cork or even not to take it. And yeah, just keep myself active. I'm basically, basically trying to get my head, head back together, together now, now which, which is, is very hard, hard and it does take time. Like, it doesn't, doesn't just happen overnight, like, like, you know. So. So. I got a phone call there, a woman I mentioned from DSB. I was like, oh God, did I really have to answer this phone? <laughs> and she was there, she's like, oh, you have, you're in arrears. And I was like, yeah, I know I'm in arrears. I was like, oh, I'll start paying me when I can afford it. Well, she goes, we have a better payment option here for you now to stay in the code and you can get the electricity meter. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, she goes, we can have that in, she said. And she said, at the moment, you're using about 15 to 20 euros a week in electricity. So if you buy 25 euros, we'll take five and it'll pay off all your arrears. And then when your arrears are paid off, you can choose then if you want to keep the meter or if you want to stay back. And I was like, I'll keep this. So here we are now saying, I'm putting my meter. I'm so happy. I don't, I don't know, know I'm not sure, I'm like, I think I'm like, like seven, seven years old. But 300 of that is security deposit, right? I'm not that bad. No, 300 of that is security deposit. I think I paid one electricity bill because I moved in there. Teal. 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 Yeah. Oh my god, that's really bad. bad. Basically, Basically, you just, just go to the shop, shop the swipe the card, card, give you like, the same phone card, card there's 20 numbers on. Yeah. Just press the star bar button, button you type in your 20 numbers. When the credit goes down to 2 euro, it starts beep, beep. And then and when it goes to 0 euro, euro it'll beep, beep again. again. Yeah. And then and once it beeps, that then the emergency credit will cut in and out of there. So there's a 5 euro emergency that I get you out today. That's perfect, thank you. I'm waiting so long for this, I feel so happy now. On your marks! Get set! <laughs> <laughs> this is the letter I have been waiting for for, for, for one month. month. I'm just so nervous just to open it up today. Um, it's just going to be like, like a big, big thing in my life, life now if I got the interview and I actually got the colours. Oh, um, I got, got the interview, interview anyway. anyway. The worst thing to is asking me up at 10 o'clock in the morning to go to us. Jennifer, I got, got the interview. Oh my god, are you I am. Show me. Bit nervous about the interview now. Relieved. Relieved is not the word for it. I'd say so. This day next week, you could be in college. Do you imagine that? Oh my god. How long am I bringing you up here? Chill, chill, chill. You see any part? How many counties will you see when you're up here, boys? You see Zungarden, you see Chamor, and you see Walford Valley Bay. Do you like coming up here, boys? When I'm dead and gone, when I'm dead and gone, you can come up here and think of me. It'll be a long way away, yeah. Thank you very much for coming up here. Come on, man! You should be used to them tarns and come on, man! You're not used to the tarns. No, boys, this, this is very big. You see the tarns and goats to see the church? Yeah, yeah. And keep the keep eye on the church, but go a small bit to the right. Can you see how far it goes down? That's where you're here. That's where all the lunch comes from. No, you remember, boys, when I brought you up here. Them houses weren't there, weren't they? The new houses. Most of them factories weren't there, weren't they? So, 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 so Meadowbank. Oh, Meadowbank weren't there. Yeah, there were three. Three, three, three you were. The cars are nearly a rock off there. That's a rock off there. The fairy deal, look, the fairy deal. Do you know what you do? Put your name on it again. 
Get me a rock, get me a chalk rock. That's called the chalk rock. Well, there's a chalk rock. I'll look for the rear rock. Right. This is all about bringing the youngsters off the stage. Keep your mind occupied. That's where your roots are. And don't ever do any wrong. Remember, you come from a great place. Next time on the estate. We're not impressed with the right side. Good luck. Why are you to say I only have two or three children? Little did I know what was going to happen. 16. There's light on your phone. She's not very successful, aren't they? I've got a whole group from together, like.